Hello, everybody. Uh, let's just randomly talk about uh, the way the boomer generation hurt our people and also about the role of women. Why is it, for example, that many Western white women do not support their men when those men want to fight back against uh, basically what is making us minorities in our own countries? Why don't the women support us? And I came up with a phrase called argumentum ad phobiam. That's Latin, and it means something like uh, argument from fear. The woman's natural position is to be submissive. And if she fears a majority of foreigners may cause an onslaught in the Western world, then her natural attitude is rather to submit to the, to the onslaught than to even attempt to fight back, basically out of fear that it might get even worse if we push back. So let me give you a perfect example of this pre precisely this kind of reasoning uh, by playing this TikTok video. Your oh. website, John McGurk, has received a lot of criticism this for weekend the news. for choosing to highlight fear. the nationality of the suspect in this knife attack at a moment in time when there were hostilities in the, in the, in the uh, city centre. I'm wondering in what way did you feel his nationality had a bearing on this incident? It was entirely relevant because as subsequent facts have shown, he was somebody who came here was granted, was, was given citizenship after being issued with a deportation order and has never, according to Sunday Independent, worked a day in his life. It is relevant because of what happened. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for a bit. Um, so the woman, you know, they're talking about the attack in Dublin where several children were stabbed by the knife-wielding attacker, an Algerian racist, is how I call him. Uh, two videos I made about this topic where I mentioned, indeed, the ethnic background of the attacker, uh, were, uh, were, were, were blocked and suspended on, on TikTok. And I think uh, it is, of course, very reasonable to mention the background. For example, we all know who killed George Floyd, a white man. All of a sudden, when white people commit a crime, it's against a so-called minority, right? Everybody deserves to know. But when the so-called minorities, who are, who are really a global majority, attack us, then all of a sudden we can't mention that we are under attack. And this is what I call argumentum ad phobiam. It means uh, an argument from fear. The woman, the lady you just saw talking earlier, she is really terrified that if the native white men of Europe or the USA would push back against the crimes being committed against us on a daily basis, that maybe things will get even worse. And therefore, we need to submit, right? We need to submit to the onslaught. And that's very strange. Um, this man... Who, you, who is trying to defend the fact that he did mention the, the, the Algerian racist uh, ethnic background, right? he should have replied very differently. He should have said to the woman, why do you hate your own kind so much? And why don't you support your men when we push back against crimes being committed against us? Are you a traitor? I hope this woman one day we'll find out, find out that she is a traitor indeed. And I in fact, us men need to make it very clear to the women of the Western world, you know, if you don't support us in defending our land, then you are one of the traitors. You are also an enemy and we will treat you accordingly because we're not going to take this any longer. Now, let's watch more of this video. Let's see, uh, let's see what else they have to say. Joseph Puska, what happened in Sligo with Yusuf Polanyi. It is further relevant, I would say. I mean, it's fascinating that I'm being asked this question because no one is saying the story was untrue. Essentially, the story... No, I'm not, essentially, I'm, I never, I'm not, didn't say it was untrue. I asked you what its relevance yeah, was. It's, it's, essentially, oh, it's not relevant, according to her, to mention that the attacker was an Algerian racist who hates white people. He hates Christians. He hates atheists. Right? He's Muslim, right? And he feels superior. Now, and what about the uh, the Irish councillor uh, Azad Talukdar, Talukdar, who called for shooting the white protesters in their into their heads, executing them in broad daylight, or having them beat to death publicly? That guy got away with this. His quotes: nobody nobody said that he needed a police investigation. Nothing, nothing happened to him because he's a brown Muslim maniac and. and Apparently, if you're Muslim, they just say, well, he was just mentally ill. He didn't really mean it. No, he did mean it. The position now seems to have gone from, you know, we're worried about misinformation and disinformation to all of a sudden you can no longer report true information or you're whipping up fear. And so I, I would question your fellow journalist. We're, we're discussing journalism. I would question you. What power do you have, Kira, 
or any journalist have to decide what fact the public should or should not know. I'm not. Well, as a journalist, I assume this woman simply serves elite interests. And the elite interest is they don't want a war between the natives and the newcomers. Because the newcomers, they believe, are going to become an exploitable majority, a taxable majority, and they're looking for money. This is what elites really only care about, just like the boomers. They only cared about money. That's what this is all about. She doesn't want to upset the financial interests of her overlords who pay her a salary to keep this guy quiet. And that's just wrong. Okay, someone in my comment section says, you know, I understand why she gets scared. We don't want our men in jail, but you're right, you know. Uh... Everyone has to defend themselves at a certain point. But the problem is we don't have enough people defending. Yeah, yes, we do. We are still an outright majority in Europe. We have 740 million people living in Europe, of which at least 700 million white people. Yeah, yeah, dude, we can take care of this. So you should be allowed to speak the truth, says the, says the Hague, Den Haag. So, you know, they want Sharia law here. Yeah, they want so many things here. Basically, I assume that they're not that they're mentally not all right. They're like a childlike race of people, extremely aggressive, extremely fearful. They're not okay, but then they think they can replace us with their nonsense, and it's just not going to happen, you know. Uh, okay, let's let's watch more of this. Uh, this thing. They have. You, so so I'm saying what journalists I'm, I'm do have I'm John McGurk, but they do have John McGurk is responsibility. For That's what, what journalists have. Not Oh, they have responsibility. That's why they jump on every matter where a white man is involved. Say the George Floyd case where Derek Chauvin, who was completely innocent, you know, was framed for murder because uh, Floyd was choking on his own fentanyl overdose and he, he had a prior heart condition. He, so he died of a heart attack while the cops, by the way, were waiting for the ambulance they had called to try to save his life. OK, but because Floyd was behaving such an, in a, such an erratic way, he was a large man, like seven foot tall basketballer, right? And so you have the problem here that whenever white men do something, it is enlarged under a magnifying glass precisely by these sort of women. Now, this woman in particular doesn't look Jewish to me. She looks like, a, like an ordinary white woman who simply, simply likes kissing elite ass, apparently. You know, a lot of these women, they love sucking elite dicks, so they go along with the elite interests and they go against their own people. This is simply called treason. She's a traitor. Overheat and, and already not to overheat to inflame an already hostile situation. That's so the responsibility. Your, 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 what your essential position is, is that you as a journalist sitting in that chair should decide what information the people watching this program have. And if you decide that they can't handle it, you don't give it to them. In this okay. case, the information was true. Sure that right. The man is right, but he, mis he misunderstands what this is all about. He thinks this is about journalists want to, to play judge on what is or is not allowed information for us. When in reality, of course, uh, uh, the, the journalist there, the woman, she's just serving elite interests. She doesn't want uh, a, a war between natives and newcomers because they think that the newcomers are going to be such a great investment. We need to welcome them in. We're going to make a ton of money off of them. We're going to compete with China with them. You're not going to do any of that, right? Well, let's watch some more. It is, okay, it is okay, utterly nonsensical to suggest that the discontent in the inner city at the moment is because of a lack of community police officers. If that is what our political class think, then they should all go. It is nothing to do with that. It, what it is more about, the discontent that we saw on Thursday, is about communities that have not been listened to by any of these three people. Okay, so I, 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 I'll be honest with you, John McGurk, I don't know if everybody would call what we saw on Thursday discontent. Mm -hmm. It was widespread what, what violence would, and looting. What, what else would you call it? Uh, widespread uh, violence and looting. Second. Widespread violence and looting. It has nothing to do with the discontent of the fact that white Irish people are being made minorities in their own countries, right? And when they speak out about this or even mention the fact that it is happening, they are called racist white supremacists, right? Or, uh, or uh, Conor McGregor, the UFC fighter, is under police investigation for backing the rioters because they are, they've had enough of uh, watching their young toddlers getting stabbed to death in broad daylight by the next lunatic Muslim Algerian racist, you know? You know, you know, it's the immigrants. They are the bad people. They really are the, they are the Nazis and fascists and, and Islamists and, and the fundamentalists who want to kill everybody they don't understand because they're not smart enough to understand other people at all. You're I'm putting words in our mouth I'm, here, I, right? I, okay. I, I, I didn't put any you, words you, in you your mouth. You actually have. Nobody else right? on this panel has been interrupted yet, but apparently I can be interrupted. Let me finish the point. You, you, it, 
It was despicable what happened on Thursday night. It was lawless. Well, at least he stands his ground, you know. Someone mentions that, uh, someone mentions there Logan's Run. If, you, if you're not familiar with this, it's a movie based on a book called Logan's Run, where uh, a bunch of very beautiful white looking people are living in a sort of commune where everything is supposed to be perfect, ex except that when you turn 30, you're supposed to die. And that's just how it is. And you're supposed to then come back in, an, in, your, in your youthful form. But in reality, what happens is they simply uh, harvest the 30 year olds, kill them. Right. But they don't know because they live in a cult. And that's what this is, in a sense, you know, in the Western world, in our countries, we are being told that diversity is heaven. Diversity is a strength. Right. And it's not. It is a cult where we are told that if we go along with this, what exactly? We'll have more money. Right. But we'll die out. Our culture will be will be gone. Our people will be gone. Our people will suffer greatly. In Germany, now that I mention it, there was a 15 year old girl walking through a certain park in Berlin. She was gang raped for two and a half hours straight by the nine men taking turns. Only one of them was convicted. The other eight were acquitted on the grounds that a, a, a psychologist, a female psychologist, testified that the men were simply venting off their frustrations due to the fact that they had a low immigration status. Uh, meaning low status as immigrants. Apparently, being an immigrant justifies raping the European population. And just, I also saw today a, a, a news article of a, a woman in the in the European Union arguing that we cannot celebrate Christmas anymore with Mary and Joseph, right? Because it's racist against people who aren't Christian. So they're destroying our religion. They're destroying uh, our women, our girls. They. How many women since 1960 or so have been raped in England? Some numbers say that it's up to 4 million native white women who have, been, who have experienced harassment or rape from the immigrant men, from the Pakistanis, the Pakis, right? Or the Muslims or the Hindus, right? They're, they're raping our women. We aren't allowed to talk about it. We're not allowed to mention the fact, for example, that in Sweden, over 90% of the rapists are immigrant men. And the majority of their victims are native women. That is actual racism. When you deliberately target a demographic for rape, that is racism. Why are you even letting these men into your country? Luckily, the Swedish government recently had to accept that indeed their immigration policy had utterly, totally failed and they had to call for a state of emergency to deal with the gang crime. OK, you know, a bit too late. But then here, meanwhile, in other countries around Europe, Apparently, our elites haven't woken up yet, and they simply go along with the replacement immigration program, thinking that they will be able to exploit the newcomers as though people are cattle, right? But some cattle actually produce something, and many people don't, you know? The immigrants certainly don't, you know? And it was ridiculous. But there are an awful lot of young people out there, and a lot of people in the inner city, who say, oh, well, they're calling it far right, they're calling it disgraceful, but that's also what they called us. You know, and here I see, uh, uh, oh, sorry, someone mentions Astro Morgan says, Johannes, you'd be shocked how many regular white men I talk to who are so brainwashed and who see, see me as racist. Yeah, well, that makes sense, you know. Um, I suppose, you know, how many men are truly dominant? You'd like to think that men are dominant and women are submissive, but I, I was thinking just about this yesterday and I realized this isn't so. I think actually 5% of women are dominant and 5% of men are dominant. Total, about 10% of humanity is dominant, right? And, and the situation you get now is that most men who also don't have the strength of character to, to fight against anything, they side with the female side of society, which says, let's just be quiet. Let's just not talk about the people murdering and raping our children. You know, let's just diminish ourselves, make ourselves small. And then one day the enemy will learn to love us. But this, of course, will never happen. The enemy will never learn to love us. They want us dead. And in particular, actually, I do believe that the Muslim people living in Europe, they are actually afraid of us. They are afraid of the white people. And but out of this fear develops then a genocidal lust where they dream about killing us off, raping us, making us disappear and so on and so on. You know, I don't think I'm making this up. This is simply how it really is, you know. So thanks for sharing the, the live feed. I hope some people come in here, you know. If you have some comments to, to give me, then just go ahead and I'll, I'll I don't catch everything, but I'll, I'll see you. Uh, 
I'll see what I can talk about. Okay, let's finish this uh, video and see if I have more to say. When we protested peacefully in East Wall. That is also what they called us when we protested peacefully okay. in Salem want... and Ross Lair okay. and Killarney. And it makes no difference because no matter what we say, they don't listen to us. You're oh. web right, okay. So I'm going to close this uh, browser for a moment. Okay, so I was talking about how, in my view, the women of the Western world uh, are uninterested in supporting their men against diversity, against the mass immigration, against the destruction of our societies, based on really on, on what really is that the elite people uh, think that they are going to make a lot of money off of the newcomers. Because Africa has a very young population, uh, countries like Nigeria. Nigeria now has like 220 million inhabitants, right? But most of them are very young. They have an average age below 20, whereas a country like Germany has a median age over 45. So, yeah, we have an old population that is phasing out, is no longer productive. We have massive, uh, we have massive medical costs for the old people. Uh, if you know that, people spend most of their medical costs during the last two years of their life, you, you understand why having a very old population is extremely t problematic. Maybe this is what the jabs are for, right? Uh, the flag behind me, if someone asks, is uh, the logo for my podcast. The, the bird is from the, the Danish Vikings, and the, the flames, uh, I uh, designed those myself. Um, so I'm trying to figure out is there no way for the men of the West to get the women on our side? I have seen on TikTok some women arguing uh, for the perspective that we should go to war with the immigrants, we should drive them out, clear out Europe, right? Clear them out. But these women are very rare. And even then, the, the women you find on the right, they still speak very carefully. They still don't want to offend anybody, which is all understandable. But this principle of non-offense may be the very thing that will kill off the Western world, you know? And so, here, so yeah, it's not immigrants' fault that Europeans don't reproduce more with their women. Yeah, it's actually not really a fault here. Uh, in any natural situation, whether it's wolves or sheep, you see that organic populations, they, they rise and they fall. They grow and they shrink, they grow and they shrink. The only difference is that now that the Western populations who grew to a certain climax, in, in Europe at least and elsewhere, now have a natural tendency to decline a little bit, to die off, basically to make room for younger generations, to make room for new future, right? It is good that you have old people who are going to die off. But what do the Western people do? The Western economies or the Western states and the, and the elite families who really run those states, because a state is really like a company run by shareholders, right? And so these people, they, hold, they want to hold on to their idea of 2% growth a year. Meaning that as their populations that they've been exploiting for so long are naturally declining for some time, not forever, but for 50 years or so before they start growing again. In the meantime, they are opening the borders to flood these countries with low quality mass immigration, people without qualifications, people who can't even speak our languages, who can't even read and write, or some of them can read the Arabic script, but they can't, they can't read the Latin script and they have trouble learning it, right? So whatever the reasons are, you end up with countries full of people who are on welfare, on benefits. In, in countries like Germany, 70% of the welfare recipients are immigrants. In, in London, 50% of the subsidized housing is occupied by immigrants. Surely this is not how you are going to compete with China. This is not how you are going to stay rich and make a lot of money when you are actually burning your wealth to maintain a foreign population, the surplus population of, of Arabia and Africa. You, you take them in and you have to feed them as though they are children. And I often feel that the, the real relationship between the white people and the other people, you know, they spoke in the past of what is called the white man's burden. This was the belief that we were superior and we had to take care of other people to educate them and to make them better, right? And of course, this didn't work, but now we have a new version of the white man's burden. And I would like to rephrase it as the white woman's burden. The white woman takes in, loves to take in the immigrants, especially because they have a lot of babies and cute little eyes, right? So the women love all these, all these new, new immigrants, right? Because they think, uh, they think this is 
what they're supposed to do because they're not having children, right? And so, and so they start taking care of all these little baby children and all these immigrant people coming in thinking that they will be able to educate them and raise them if only those racist, fascist white men would just give them, give them your savings, give them your houses, give them your money. As they think that if we give the immigrants our money, they will turn out to be smart and productive. Give them a suit and tie, make them a mayor of a, of a, of a, of a city, as they do in the United States. They, have not, they now have a lot of black African-American mayors, but, but they're not succeeding. They're not, it's not working. These so-called Democrat uh, uh, capitals in the U.S. and Democrat cities, you know, they're, in, they're miserable. They're in decline. And then they blame, they blame what? White terrorists for pooping in San Francisco streets. Uh, <laughs> no, dude, this is you. This is your own failure. Uh, this is literally your own failure. You are unable to, to make something work. And why would that be? Is it because your populations in those cities are state dependent, welfare dependent? They, they don't have skills and qualifications. They don't know how to work, right? Uh, somebody is loving my... Uh, <laughs> Some people are loving my speeches here. All right. Let me see if I can. Uh... All right. I love this, man. Yeah, I love you too. You know? So if you just came to watch here, I was talking about why the women of the West, white women, don't support the men fighting back, pushing back against, you know, our replacement, really, our disappropriation or a fancy word or disownment, you know. Here, someone says fire control. Like blacks showing up in a suit thinking things function because they showed up in a suit. That's exactly what I mean. It's, it's, it's the argument of if I look the part, I can do it. But no, uh, it's different. You know, you can you can talk about many things like work ethic. Do the Protestants or the Catholics have the better work ethic? You know, but when you have migrants coming to Germany who simply tell you, hey, I don't want to bike five kilometers to work in the cold and the rain. Uh, I don't want to work 40 hours a week. I expect everything to be given to me because you are colonials and you stole everything from Africa. They don't realize that the resources are just like one or two percent of a modern civilization's uh, success. You actually need people with skills and talents to turn those resources into products, goods, services, infrastructure. And if you don't have the intelligence or the will, all right, to do that, then you will simply fail. You know, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, I think what's going on here is, uh, I've said, I've mentioned it several times already now, is that you have these elite people who think they're going to make a lot of money off of the, of the newcomers. And I'm arguing that this isn't so. It's not going to succeed. It's not going to happen. You know, someone says you have black Republican senators who are great at their job. Really? Are they really? Do you think maybe the U.S. Senate is so fake that everybody just reads everything off of a script? You know, in the Netherlands, we also have our parliament. And most people in the parliament today, they're actors. They are actors who receive via SMS how they're supposed to vote in, in, the, in the elections, meaning the, the parliamentarian votes, right? They're not genuine. None of the, they're all actors like Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's just an actor. It's not real. These people aren't really smart. They have smart people writing, ghost writers writing their speeches for them, you know. But even, even so, you have Kamala Harris in the, in the United States. Everybody who knew her personally knew that she should never have been vice president of the United States. Yet they make her vice president. They even allow her to run at all. You know, there was this Canadian, no, Alaskan woman. I forgot her name. This white Alaskan woman who also ran with, uh, with some president during some presidential candidate. Uh, uh, she was clearly not mentally fit, but she wasn't elected, right? But they elect one because she's black, Kamala Harris. Y what are you doing? She even refuses, apparently, to read her ghostwriter's speeches, and she wants to do it herself, and she tosses this word salad that makes no sense whatsoever. It's really weird. I haven't heard of her for, for about a year or more or so since Ukraine started, probably because she thought Ukraine was the same thing as China. She couldn't see the difference. Uh, someone asks, do you believe that the new PM for the Netherlands is controlled opposition? Yes, obviously. Geert Wilders of the Netherlands is not going to do anything for us. He's, his interests lie in Israel. He's Jewish. His wife is Jewish. He's half Indonesian. Do you think he's going to fight for the survival of the Dutch people? Only to the extent that we can pay taxes for Israel. 
He's going to make sure that our taxes will be spent on the defense of Israel. Other than that, he's not going to do anything for, from us, you know. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. Geert Wilders' grandparent is a Muslim Indonesian. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense, right? That explains everything. All right. I've been uh, uh, speaking a bit excitedly about this topic, but then maybe I could start thinking of, you know, what can we actually do to convince the women of the West that they should side with the men, right? Even though globally we are a minority, in Europe we are a majority. Not in European cities, but if you look at the suburbs and the rural countryside in Europe, it's all majority white. We are still the large majority in this continent, but we need to keep it that way. And, you know, either, you know, the question is, can you still win with birth rates? In Germany, the white women would have to have nine or ten children each in order to save Germany. Right? That may be too much. They're not going to do it anyway. Because they care more about their Louis Vuitton bag and their pearl earrings and their and their mini uh, their mini cars, right? Then perhaps that is also the solution. Uh, I have some connection issues uh, apparently. I hope you're still watching. I hope the connection is restored in a bit. Okay, I had a connection issue. Uh, TikTok, it, the streaming service, sometimes it drops out. So I hope uh, I hope you weren't all logged off. But yeah. So how do we get women on board? And I think primarily when we tell them and make it very clear to them, you're not going to have a lot of money anymore. The, the age of wealth that the baby boomers had, right, is kind of over and we're going to have to fight for our survival. You see, uh, this is what I wanted to talk about, you know. Um, so why is it that the baby boomer generation uh, kind of neglected or abandoned taking care of their children and that is because there's, you have two options here. If you are going to become old, either you have a lot of money and you can buy care, or you have a lot of children and some of those children will be willing to take care of you when you're old because you took care of them, right? What happened with the baby boomer generation, they were the first real Western middle class generation who got a lot of money and wealth in their hands. They knew that they were going to be old people with money. Most of them. I know not all boomers are rich, but as a group, as a generation, they were going to get the money and the wealth so they didn't need to rely on their children wiping their asses when they were old. They had money to buy care, right? And so they neglected their children to some extent. But this principle also applies to our Western societies at large. Namely, we have become societies that thought that if we just have a lot of money, we will be able to buy the luxuries and the care and the wealth that we need when we grow old. And it turns out that this isn't so. Because if you don't have enough children, you will simply die out. But the newcomers are not your equals. They're not equal. They are very, very different in many different ways. And so what happens is, the, the Muslim generations growing up in European cities mostly nowadays, they are not going to take care of your old hairy white ass. They're going to cut your throat and take all your wealth and money. They're going to ask you, where did you hide your diamonds in your bedroom, right? And that's what they're after, really. Yeah, someone asks... You should host some events or something in the future. Yeah, I am thinking about doing speeches outside, but I wonder how far I'll get. I'm going to do it, but I wonder, you know, when will I get shot, right? Or when will I get arrested and I'll be in jail for 10 years simply for saying that, you know, a certain demographic is stabbing our children, you know? You can't say anything anymore, you know? But I'm going to do it anyway. Someone asks, how do you want to fight for your survival? Well, considering that most of the... Uh, most of the white, no, most of the immigrants who came to the West and Europe and so on, Britain, they moved to the big cities first and then the smaller cities. And now they're also trying to transfer them out into the countryside. But of course, nobody like the immigrants, they come here for money. They want wealth and excitement of the flashing lights of the big city. They all want to go to the big city. They don't, they don't care about living in the countryside. And what, what, ne what next? You want them to take over farms? These people couldn't farm in their own countries. Why do you think they would? Do you think they'll succeed in being farmers over here with us? Impossible. This requires a certain work ethic, a willingness to work 100 hours a week as a farmer. If you don't have that willingness, you're, you know, you're not going to be in the food production uh, here. It's really weird, you know. 
But how do we fight back is considering that the immigrants are largely concentrated in, in the cities, you may need to accept at some point that cities themselves won't last forever. This has happened before, by the way, somewhere around, somewhere around the time of uh, the 10th century AD, 12th century, there was a period where Europeans began leaving the big cities. The cities actually deteriorated and crumbled. People who stayed behind, they went extinct. Other people left and they found some new place to live. But perhaps this is the solution, the de-urbanization of Europe. If you are willing to sacrifice the cities, then you make Europe instantly so unattractive that no one will want to come here anymore. Since they only come for the wealth, they only come here for the money and the flashy things. Right? If you can somehow de-urbanize Europe so that places like Paris, Amsterdam, London, and so on, lose their lure to the point where no one will want to come there anymore and people will have to start moving out again. Right? But then there is an advantage all of a sudden. In the white people of Europe, they don't mind living in the countryside. It's healthy for us. We've got nature, we've got snow, we'll have ice. Right? But the immigrants who really only like their heated homes in the cities, right? because in the cities you have the big apartment complexes, which is, by the way, the only reason why we are able to house so many people in, in cold Europe, is because we put them together in the big cities where you have these massive housing blocks with uh, uh, central heating. Central heating, ladies and gentlemen, if you would turn off central heating in every city in Europe today, within six months, with this winter, this very winter, 90% of the immigrants will be gone. They will go back to their own countries. You know, this is what they do anyway. Remember, they come here. They say they're asylum seekers or immigrants. And then what happens? They go home on holidays back to their own country, right? Like people from Somalia. They come here for asylum and they get the money. And then first thing they do is they go back to Somalia on holiday. If we, if we somehow would, would attack the central heating infrastructure, 90% of immigrants would simply go home. They would book a flight and fly home, gone. They wouldn't come back anymore. And if you could somehow circle the cities and simply, you know, I call it de-urbanize the world. I got the idea actually from a very ancient book about ancient Ur, Uruk in uh, ancient Mesopotamia. There's the Lament of Ur where a horse riding raiding party circles a, a, a town, the town has a small stream of water going into the city walls. They block off the stream of water. And within two days, obviously, the population there has almost died of dehydration. And then they write in a very poetic way that these raiders, the warriors, they go into the cities and they, lit, and they describe, they smash the skulls as though they were clay pots. Now, this is very extreme, but you see, you know, if you're not willing to do things like this, if you're not willing to basically say, okay, if we don't want these immig immigrants, the only solution is we have to make the cities extremely unattractive to live in, so unattractive that we don't even want to live there anymore. Everybody will have to leave there, right? And that, it can be done. Where there's a will, there's a way. You can do whatever you want, you know? You know? Is that a youth, youth flag? No, I don't know. It's made of plastic, probably. Uh, this is just the logo for my podcast, but it's the Danish Viking, uh, the Danish Viking uh, eagle, Odin's eagle, and the flames. It's supposed to fly up into the wind toward victory, right? That's the whole idea. I love the cold, yeah. You know, I can get used to the cold. I love snow and ice. Usually when snow falls, it becomes very quiet, very pleasantly quiet, right? You know, there's not so much noise. Even the cars, even if there's cars, on snow, it's the, the snow dampens the noise a little bit. The number one source of noise from a car is the wheels touching the, the roads, you know. The Utes are the Danes, yeah. Suppose so. Yeah. So I've been going, I've been venting my frustrations a little bit because I, I read an article in about, I, I spoke about this before, where a German girl was raped by nine immigrant men for two and a half hours in a park. And uh, there was a psychologist who, who justified this, saying that, oh, well, the immigrant men, they're just frustrated over their low status as immigrants, really. And they use that now as a justification. So a woman, right, a female psychiatrist justifies gang raping German women. Um, maybe we can justify de-urbanizing Europe, destroying all the cities, circling the cities, cutting off the water supply, cutting off the, the food and the electricity, simply starving the cities out. 
right? And then we will give everybody an opportunity to book a flight home, but that will be that with, with diversity and immigration. It can be done whenever you want to, you know? Yeah, great work. Greetings from Finland. Yeah, nice, nice that you're here. Uh, we will all have to unite, definitely. Yes, Boeth, I think the first step is to have five or more children. Yeah, well, like I said, it doesn't have to be that way. Of course, you need to have like one or two children. You know, this is everybody's job. But then again, the, the people, did you know that one in eight people in Amsterdam in the Netherlands has an IQ between 70 and 85? This means, this means you are slightly mentally handicapped. You will have trouble operating a microwave, for example. And you need to have constant supervision to, uh, uh, to do simple work. You need to have someone there constantly telling you what to do next right they're they're like children people with this kind of intelligence they're they're like children but if you notice for example that the majority of people wi within that range of 70 to 85 iq are not the native dutch white people with blue eyes and blonde hair it's not them right it's not the native dutch it's not white people the majority of this low iq group are obviously immigrants and people with an immigrant background okay so you're dealing with a large group of people who are slightly to actually mentally handicapped right and what are you supposed to do with that you will have as a society you are going to have to feed them and feed and clothe and, and house them because they're not going to be able to do any productive work that you would need them to do to compete with china right so you're stuck with a, a population a baby population I, I call it the white woman's burden you have to basically babysit a foreign population who can't take care of itself because the foreign nations who sent their people over here also don't want to take care of them. You know, we should start charging money. If Europe is supposed to be some kind of immigrant hotel, we should charge Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Morocco, Turkey. We should charge these states for the cost of taking care of their people here. They need to pay for it. If they, if they, if they don't want their people, their own people within their own borders, then we're going to have to, you know, start charging money for it. You know, it just I've just had enough of this, you know. You're blocked. I see a lot of people. Uh, one one common trick that people use uh, online is that they first kind of agree with you a little bit and praise you a little bit, and then they switch sides and say, "Oh, but I hate you," right? And that, so I block those people. You know, I'm so, I'm just done with this shit. You know, the first mover IQ is generally higher. Okay, I suppose so. You know, brain rock comment. Exactly. I blocked her. You know, you say something like that, you're out. You know, I, I want to support our people to survive in the long term. And I expect our people also to support each other. We need to start supporting each other. And this basically defies the whole notion of universalism. It means you're not here only for yourself. That's the rational self-interest principle that Jordan Peterson always peddles. You're, you're here for yourself and for your people. You're supposed to do things in the benefit of your people and the benefit of their survival. Right. But I notice so many people have, have difficulty with this whole concept because it means you have to be a grown up because a child cannot take care of others. Grown ups can. And maybe this is why they don't want you to grow up anymore. They call it adulting as though adulting is a dirty word. You know, I'm from the Netherlands. Yeah. So and high borders. Yeah. High borders around Europe. Sure. But look, Europe has the sea to the west. Europe has the Mediterranean to the south. Right. Uh, and then what do we have to the east? Well, we have steppe lands to the east. Okay, we might we might need to defend the eastern borders, but come on, the Mediterranean is easy to defend. All you have to do is don't bring the people here. Don't send your boats to pick up the, the customers and, and take them to Europe. Don't fly them in. It's really easy to defend Europe. We've got the seas and the Mediterranean, right? All right? The only problem here is that our governments are traitors. They have sided with the foreigners. They are deliberately bringing everybody into our country, right? They're doing this on purpose, you know. Uh, it's just treason. I just don't get it why our leaders are like that. In Germany, you have Olaf Scholz, the, the bold little munchkin, right? He, he is just evil. He's, he's like an employee working for his foreign masters, basically betraying the German people every day. He knew about the Nord Stream pipeline getting blown up. He knew all about it in advance. But I suppose they make him a, a high-ranking Freemason, and then he'll he'll just go along with it. You know, it's just absolutely treason. You know, 
Someone asks, why not just use private prisons like in the U.S.? You can't possibly deport everyone. No, private prisons have to be paid for. Why would I put such a drain on the native people? What would, what would, what would be a much better idea would sim be simply to introduce, you know, the firing squads. But deportations, like I said, if you would accept that you can, if you sacrifice the big cities and basically make life in the city so miserable that there's only one way out, take the plane out, go back to your own country. We could just do that, you know? We could just send them back by plane. It's really not that hard. You, you make their lives so miserable in the cities that no one will want to live there anymore. There are many options and many ways to do this. But putting people in prisons is too costly unless you are going to actually shoot them the next morning. You know, Otherwise, you can't do it. I need a sip of water. I don't know if I can put this video on YouTube. Probably not. So after streaming this... Uh, I might just put it on on Rumble or something. Well, firing squads are for the enemies, right? And and you string traitors get the hangman, traitors get the news, and enemies get the bullets, something like that. I mean, how do you want to deal with? Let's let's talk about the white traitors for a moment. And I'm not even talking about Jewish traitors, but I mean actual white non-Jewish people who betray their own kind by supporting mass immigration, open borders, and so on. The people who want to play submissive and submit to the to the newcomers, you know. Uh, these people, what do we do with them? You string them up, right? What else can you do with them? You might give them a warning or so, but if they continue, then you just string them up. There's just nothing else to do, you know. The Chinese know how to deal with them too, yeah. Well, the Chinese don't really allow that much immigration from Africa or so. They have internal immigration between, say, um, you know, Korea, China, and Japan, and Thailand. And so they have that kind of immigration. Imagine we would, we in Europe had restricted our entire immigration program to just white people, say, from Ukraine, white people from Russia, white people from the USA, but just white people. It would simply not allow other people to come in. That's kind of what, what China does. China has a sort of race-based, a sort of racial uh, immigration system where they just don't allow that many Africans to come in. Although they are now also accepting some due to their presence in Africa. China is very well uh, invested in Africa. They're building their ports and their, their railroads and so on, you know. The Netherlands is still a Christian country, yeah. But for how long, you know? It, you know, in the European Union, some, some lady at the European Union said that uh, celebrating Christmas with a Mary and a Joseph and a baby Christ uh, is now racist because uh, Muslims hate it. Uh, excuse me, we hate mosques, so mosques are racist. Mosques are racist. You know, the flag is my logo. So welcome to my podcast for those of you just joined or if you're watching, what am I doing here? I was talking about why white women in general don't support their men fighting against immigration, open borders and so on. And to some extent, it is because they're submissive. They're scared. They don't want to cause a fight. But I think it's inevitable and it's, it would be better to pick the fight sooner rather than later because if we wait too long, we might not be able to win it anymore. Today, we can still win it. Uh, I I don't sell this particular flag, but of course I, I have a, a Teespring. Uh, I have a shop somewhere where. I, let me see if I have it. If I have the link for you over here. By the way, in the meantime, you can go to my. Uh, you can go to my my uh, Substack newsletter www.jmk.info. I have a a shop where you can buy this, but it's not it's not well integrated. If you really really want to buy. Uh, apparel with this logo on it. I suppose there's something like a flag for sale. This particular flag was uh, custom made somewhere, so I, I don't remember where I had it made. But I suppose I will start selling them at some point, yeah. But good idea. Thank you for letting me know about that, you know. The next few decades will be very harsh. Yeah, I mean, what are the options for our kind of people? Either we fight back by basically decapitating the cities, kill the cities, you drive out the immigrants, since most of them live in the cities. Or... What else? We need to have 10 children per woman. That might not even be possible. So that option exists, but it might not even be doable. What else can we do? Well, we can leave Europe. We can uh, 
recenter, like re relocate ourselves in certain parts within Europe where we can make a last stand. For example, Scandinavia or Eastern Germany or um, Hungary, uh, Czechoslovakia and so on. Places like that, Czechia and Slovakia, they're separate countries now, I know. But, you know, either we reconvene there in Eastern Europe, right? And we allow Western Europe, what, to turn into Neo-Africa? You know, that's horrible. We have another option is where we might go to... Uh, uh, we leave Europe altogether, or a large number of, of us leave, to settle the subarctic region on the condition that we assume that climate change is real and the temperatures are really rising, then maybe the subarctic regions of, say, northwestern Russia, Siberia, Greenland, <coughs> uh, Alaska and Canada and so on, and Antarctica and so on, may all become habitable. And these territories, territories combined are several times the size of Europe. So that might be an option. We might have that as an option. And otherwise, it would simply be war. You would have to go to a war, <coughs> uh, a civil war, a massive civil war. But you need backing of an actual military to do that. You can't just have a say you want a civil war and then what? How are you going to do it? To have a civil war successfully and beat the, the migrants, basically, to win, to win back what is ours, to win back what was lost, <clears throat> you need the army on your side. Maybe not the police, but the army definitely because of their equipment. You need, therefore, military leadership on your side. But why is it Why is it that military leaders in Europe apparently don't care to defend their continent anymore? They don't, feel, they don't think to themselves, hey, wait a minute, maybe we need to depose our politicians. Maybe we need to arrest our politicians because they're traitors. <clears throat> How does this work even? How is it that the militaries in Europe have not even... Well, oh, wait, except in France. There was this general in France, a couple of generals in France, who signed a, joined, joined signed a letter that they said they were going, they did want to fight, they did want to fight uh, the diversity coming and saying that this has gone too far. So I suppose privately then, I hope military people are thinking about what, what to do, you know. <clears throat> Someone says, uh, it's women in politics who also had a, very bad impact uh, beside the xenophile businessmen. Yeah, women in politics. Yeah, it's really problematic. Yeah, the European Union is going to fall apart like the Soviet Union. Yes, well, I hope so because that gives us opportunity for our people to get reorganized and just start over with something. You know, you know who pays them? What does the word soldier mean? Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, soldier means someone pays them, right? But who pays them? Well, the state pays them, so I guess that's why they have to go along with it. But it shouldn't be that way, you know. Is there any hope for South Africans, for white South Africans? Well, actually, we're, I would have to turn the question around. If you in South Africa manage to survive in the long term, those are the lessons that we will have to learn in Europe because we're going to have to either go through the same experience because that's the sixth op option, I suppose, is that Europe becomes like South Africa, the whites become a minority, We'll be a withering minority and living in the countryside, right? <clears throat> but we will be small and, and powerless, and this is what they want, of course. But I would never accept that situation. In that situation, someone will have to stand up and lead the men to battle, which is going to have to go to war. I mean, what else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? You know, we, we can't allow Europe to turn into South Africa, but we can learn from the lessons learned in South Africa. But if you look at Ireland, I think maybe Ireland or France, countries like that, are going to be the first countries where the whites are a minority in their own country because of the mass immigration. Yeah? And so we learn lessons there, but the lessons have to be learned very quickly so we can turn them around and apply them toward you know, saving ourselves. You know? South African whites are being slaughtered, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. So basically you want to do what the Nazis did to the Jews, to the non-white immigrants. Okay, you're blocked. Because the Jews, right, are like immigrants. The immigrants, they came to Europe and they are the ones raping and murdering our people. Why shouldn't we stand up to them? Of course we're going to do something about something. Or go, of course we're going to find some place where our people can live on, right? It is simply not going to happen that we are going to become minorities in our own countries and we have to live under Sharia law while they rape all the women and children. That is not going to happen. And you know it's not going to happen. We're going to win this one way or another, you know. I'm so tired of these people always turning things around and making it about them, you know. We are the, one, we are the ones under attack here and we have every right to defend ourselves, you know. 
Yeah, Belgium is also a very bad place. Belgium has so many immigrants. I went to Brussels once, which is basically one giant Muslim city. Like, where are all the white people, you know? Yeah, projection and gaslighting, exactly. Like I said earlier, they are afraid of us. Many immigrants coming to us to live in the Western world, to live in Europe, they are afraid of us, but out of that fear grows their genocidal bloodlust. They want us dead and gone. Right? They want to defund us and you know erase us from our history, steal our mythology, rewrite our fairy tales, and then pretend as though they was the original Europeans. Damn, you know they weren't. They don't even understand. I think many of them really believe the Afrocentrist bullcrap. They really believe it. They really believe it. That's just mental. It's just beyond my comprehension how you can even believe that. You know. <clears throat> Doesn't Norway's Oslo have to pray, have to pray to call for the Muslims? We have it in the Netherlands too, like in Utrecht, Breda. I've been to many places in the Netherlands where they have, where I heard the Islamic call to prayer, which is really a call to war and conquest. It's just, just so disgusting that we're even allowing this. This should be shut down with force, but no, we just allow it to happen because our politicians are bankrupt or or broke or or you know corrupt. They take the money from Qatar and they, they do whatever Qatar tells them. Money rules Europe. And that is number one, the number one problem. Our modern European culture is based on the love of money. It is the, the, uh, the worship of the god Mammon. Mammon is the money god, the devil, all right? Uh, and that's the real problem. We're being, yeah, the word is blackmailed. Yeah, blackmailed or they're just, they're just corrupt. Either way, they're being blackmailed because, you know, you think a guy like, Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, you know, what do you think, huh? Does he like little children? Does he diddle kids? You know, at some point, I've got nothing to lose anymore because I don't want to live in this Europe. I don't want to live in a diverse town. I'm going to do something about it anyway, and that means eventually I will be arrested or shot. And I, I don't care about that anymore. I'm done with this. This this has to stop. We have to be able to find a way for ourselves to move on and live on without having to submit to the enemy who will never love us. We don't we shouldn't have to submit to Sharia law. This thing should not exist anywhere in the world. And you see so much treason among our own people. You have white bishops promoting Sharia law. <clears throat> you have uh, uh, white politicians promoting the mass immigration. It's all, they're all bought. They're all bought and paid for, I suppose. How else can you do this to your people? You can only do it if you worship Mammon more than God. You know, it's just evil. <clears throat> uh, someone saw a David, uh, video from David Irving about the 1956 uprising in Hungary, and he didn't even know, but the biggest resentment of all was the communists. Okay, people hated the communists more, right? No, it's Satan's work, yeah. Yeah, you can thank the Zionists for all of this, but also the corrupt among us. Our own people have a problem. They love money too much. They don't care about, you know, doing what is right anymore. And we're going to have to go back to that. Or did you really think that those, those heroes... Uh, those tough-looking, big-jawed heroes of the past that we always talk about, our heroes, our people, you think they did it for money? No, they did it simply because they wanted to do something good. They wanted to be heroes, you know. Johannes, why don't you mention how majority of North African migrants in Europe were imported? Yeah, I suppose they were, right? They were brought, brought here. Like, still today, across the Mediterranean Sea, there's a taxi service. The European Union simply has several ships bringing these people over. You know, this is treason. We don't have a lack of labor. That's nonsense. Because we could have just moved factories to Africa. You know, why does why does Africa still not have an industrial an industry? Because it never built it, you know? That's a real problem. The whole notion that we need laborers and we need uh, people to replace us, it's, it's nonsense. It's not true. Because there's nothing wrong with an economy shrinking for a little while as long as you defend your borders, which we could have done. We had the, we had the capacity to close the borders, allow our economies to shrink a little bit. And then we could have just protected ourselves. We, we would have been fine. We would have been making room. Housing prices would have come down. Everything would have been affordable and easy as long as we then aim to defend ourselves in the long term. <clears throat> You know, 
And we're not going to be able to do that now with the immigrants because they're going to slaughter us. They're going to go to war with us, you know, because they're afraid of us, you know. The UK was sending men to the colonies until 1960s whilst importing non-white immigrants. That's absolutely insane. Same in the Netherlands. We had a province called Drenthe where there were too many people living there and they actually sent many of those people to Latin America and the majority of them died of malaria and tropical diseases. They were called the Burus people. The Burus. Just like the Boer people in Afri South Africa. It's insane that we've been sending our people out to get rid of our people. <clears throat> and instead of bringing our own people back home, we started opening the borders to, well, lower cost immigrants. Come on. This is insane, you know. <clears throat> people are more important than the economy. Exactly. The economy should serve the people. And people should work for the economy to serve the people. But it shouldn't be so that people serve only the economy and the economy serves what exactly? The rich, you know. This is wrong. All right, I'm going to close this one off. Usually I do a, a daily live show uh, once a day around 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. European time. And um, if you want to follow me on my Substack, you go to www.jmk.info. You can also go to my Telegram, at JohannesMK. Let's see, what else have I got? Oh, and my Twitter, at JohannesMKX. You know, and you're, I suppose you're here on TikTok, and my YouTube is on, at the great Johannes. Yeah, I have different usernames because certain names weren't available anymore. So, either way, uh, I probably will be back again tomorrow. I'm going to try to do this every day. And... Uh, not sure if I can upload this video to YouTube, though, because it was full of uh, really, really nasty stuff. But at least TikTok Live gives me some freedom of speech. Apparently, nobody bothers me. Nobody bothers me here. It's one of the few places where I can just talk, you know. So, okay. Have a good evening. Have a good day.